So here is the Coast Guard marching song we sing on land or sea. Through surf and storm and howling gale high shall our purpose be. Semper Paradis is our God. Okay, we're recording, and uh, my name is William Thiessen. I'm the Atlantic Area Historian for the U.S. Coast Guard, and uh, we're here at the Bering Sea Patrol Alaska Veterans uh, Reunion in Kansas City. Today's date is August 26th. Uh, we're here at about 11 a.m. We've got four members of the uh, crew of the uh, Coast Guard uh, icebreaking cutter Storis, and uh, we're here to talk today about the uh, historic Northwest Passage. Uh, ask uh, the four members of the crew that are here today to introduce themselves individually and then after that we're just going to have a chronological description of the events that took place on the uh, Northwest Passage um, in just kind of a uh, discussion format so I'll ask them one at a time to introduce themselves down the row here and then we'll begin uh, talking about the uh, the Northwest Passage so Dick you want to start out? I'm Dick Juge, and uh, I was aboard the Coast Guard Cutter Storis. I think it went aboard in like January of '57, and got out in like July of '58. And I was fortunate enough to be aboard when uh, we did the Northwest Passage. How do you, how do you uh, spell your name? J U G E, just like huge, but with a J. Uh -huh. And you're a resident of New Orleans now. I'm a resident of New Orleans. Okay. okay. Chuck, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Charles F. Schmitzer III, S C H M I T C E R. I went aboard the stores, I believe, early spring of 1957. Stayed until uh, after the cruise in December. Transferred to Air Detachment in Kodiak, Alaska. Remained my tour in Alaska. And you're resident of Pittsburgh now? A Butler, Pennsylvania. Okay. So we're 35 miles north of Pittsburgh. Okay. Great. All right. Claire? I'm Claire Upton. I uh, went aboard the stores in May of 57. Got out the stores in. March of 58. Uh, I'm currently residing in Bonifu, Utah. Okay. Good. All right. And uh, Cornelius? Uh, my name is uh, Cornelius Farley, and uh, I joined the Storis uh, in January 1957. I served aboard the vessel until February 59. And my job on the ship was uh, I was a lieutenant at the time, and I was the engineering officer aboard the vessel. I also had relieved the former engineer, who was uh, Lieutenant Commander Douglas Clifton, was the man I relieved. Okay, and uh, you presently reside where? Oh, I presently reside. I currently reside in the San Francisco Bay Area, specifically San Rafael, California. Okay, great. Would somebody like to start out with where the, uh, the uh, voyage began, or uh, the voyage actually began began out of Juneau. Uh, this was going to be a special trip, and I know myself. I happened to be on the Sweetbriar prior to going on the Storis, and I fought with one of the other quartermasters when I went on. Of course, we left Juneau, came down the intercoastal waterway to Seattle and that took us about three days trip to make that trip to Seattle where we was going to meet up with the uh, Bramble and Spar who were coming from the East Coast to go with us around the North American continent. What was the date that you started out from uh, Juneau and went down to Seattle and started out? I don't have the date with me. It was probably sometime in the latter part of June, about June 25th, 24th, somewhere along in there. Because we left Seattle, I think it was July 1st. I have that information at home, which I'll present to you later. Sure. I'll send you a copy of it. Okay. All right. Any uh, events or activities that come to mind when you took that particular, just from Juneau down to Seattle? Um, were you all on board at that point? I was yes. aboard. I think we were all on board. Oh, yes. We were all on board. I don't remember so all yeah. four were aboard at that I point? I do believe so, yes. Okay. But I don't, I don't remember, you know, being a quartermaster, I was on a bridge, you know, and got to see a lot of the things that were going, talking with the officers and everything, and I don't recall of anything particularly happening, you know, on the way to Seattle. 
So you will, you were all aware of the fact you were going to be taking the Northwest Passage yes. when you started out in June? Yes. And you were all excited by the prospect? Yeah. Okay. Of course, we got to Seattle, and I think we stayed there, what, two or three days? We had to load up and the supplies and so We had supplies, I know, to get. Claire, we weren't here. attached to Kodiak before this group? No, no, no we didn't I go to board, I went aboard it in Judo, but, but I know we ended up in Kodiak. But yeah, but at the time, we were... When we left Juneau, uh, we became detached from Juneau. Okay. And when we returned off the trip, we went to Kodiak. A new station. Right. What they did, they moved the uh, Coast Guard Cutter Sweetbriar, a 180 footer, from Ketchikan. Mm -hmm. And moved that hit up to Juneau. Okay. And so that was enabled, you know, some of the crew members from the Sweetbriar to transfer to the Storis. Some of the stores that didn't want to make the trip could go to the Sweetbriar and stay right in Juneau. I see. Okay. I know they had a list of about oh, 15, 20 people that wanted to swap. Mm -hmm. And they wanted uh, rate for rate mm -hmm. going across. These people did not want to do the Northwest Passage. Yeah. Huh. Is that right? The wow. guy that I replaced, when I went on board, I was only a second class quartermaster. And the guy that I replaced was a first class quartermaster. Uh -huh. But he was doing master at arms duties down on the mess deck, and the navigator or the ops chief or officer, you know, he wanted to have a quartermaster on the bridge, mm -hmm. so he was willing to make the swap. Hmm. And he also stayed in Juno. Yes, he stayed. So on he didn't get not only do the Northwest Passage, but he wasn't detached to Kodiak, so his family wouldn't have been uprooted. No, no, he stayed. Life. He went on the Sweetbriar and became a uh, member of the Sweetbriar. And what was the, the size of the crew ordinarily, and then what was the crew like when you started? The crew the normally ran about 80 people. I think I can correct that. We had, uh, I think it was 119 people on the side of the ship. We also brought extra people on the trip yeah. who went along. Uh, there was a Navy photographer and I suppose historian to help put things together. And there was a couple of scientific type people. I would estimate four or five people came aboard. They were uh, supernumeraries, but they had a function in their own organization, and they were with us. They were going along for the ride. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I recall the number of people on the ship quite quite vividly because when the vessel was built and uh, first operated, Toledo, Ohio, 1941. It had, uh, I think, a signed number of 85 people to the ship. That was, and then the war was on, and the policy was during the war to have extra people on the ship because you have now have to have more eyes looking here and there, more guns, and you also were training people for the next ships coming along. So the policy was to have extra people on all the ships. And they wound up with in around 120 people, I understand. <laughs> and anyway, that carried on while I was there. And uh, in 1958, when the trip was all done, and we had an, uh, Captain Harold Wood was replaced by commander and captain of the vessel, William Foster, I got along a little smoother <laughs> with Foster than Wood, you know, just those things. Mm -hmm. And I was in the captain's quarters one day we were having an academic discussion and I said you have too many people on the ship they're bumping into each other particularly in the deck department the poor little kids are they, 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 you know there's only so much paint you can chip and paint and this and that and there's too many of them and when they sleep in their glory hole the, the bunkhouse every night smells like a men's gymnasium after a while they open all the ventilations and it clears out very good, but that's uh, that's what it is. So he said, "What do you propose to do about it, Neil? Neil being a uh, nice name for Cornelius, see? Right. Uh, familiar name. Well, I says, uh, uh, reduce the ship down. Oh, is that so? He said, a little irritated. So a couple of days later, I brought up to him a little list I had of how I propose to reduce each and every department. The deck department, something like eight, ten guys maybe. 
And uh, one less cook, one less yeoman.